Hey, you're famous. <laughs> famous. Who's that guy? Kind of a big deal, apparently. Hold on. Sir, is that you up on the on the bragging board? It is. It's pretty impressive, man. Back in my back in my glory days. You should never be back in your glory days. You should be currently living them. <laughs> about the first bass you ever caught bro the first bass i ever caught casting a lure because i caught bass on like bobber and minnow and bobber and worm or whatever but whatever i was like i don't know 12 years old little silver and black jointed rapala little pond my cousin took me there and he's like just pick one bait out of my tackle box i picked that lure i remember i cast it like next to this fountain and I could see my lure on top, floating on top. And I'm just reeling it all slow because I'm like, oh, that thing's cool. It swims like a snake. How old were you? Oh, like 12 maybe. <laughs> and freaking reeling it all slow. And this like two and a half, two and a half pounds large drop. Boom! Smokes it. It's like jumps out of the water. It scared me. My legs were shaking. <laughs> and I was just like reeling as hard as I could. And like I was like so excited. I reeled like the fish all the way to the top of the rod. And then I'm like dragging it on the grass and my cousin like comes over and like helps me un unhook it. And I just remember my legs were shaking like crazy. And that was that was what got me like, that was like, oh, I'm gonna start buying lures. And that, that was it. That's that was it, man. It. That'll do it right there. That was the end of it. That's game over. Now I got thousands of dollars worth of lures. Back. Now look at all that crap back there. Got that, that big, big tackle storage right there. That's right, the big you know? tackle box on, on the water. Floating tackle box. That, that's what started it all for me, mostly. I mean, before that, I, I caught you know, just bluegills and stuff on bobbers. That was fun, too, though. That's a good story, man. Yeah. yeah. I enjoyed it. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Now we only got, like, three more hours to go. <laughs> <laughs> how, many, how many miles was this little leg? Like, 400 or something? It was, like, 370 or something. Okay. We're almost there. Almost there. It'll be worth it. It's a little windy today. That's all right. Good travel day. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure that's like a lot of dust up in the air. That's weird. Farm fields, I guess. The old dust bowl. Welcome dust to the bowl. Midwest. The depression. What do they call this? Is this like the Upper Midwest, or is this yeah, the Midwest? I guess it's the Upper Midwest, maybe. We're like Central Wisconsin right now. So what are the gangsters up here like to say? Like, okay. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're from the South Side of Chicago, aren't you? That's where I've been hanging out. <laughs> I always knew you were a little hood. Yeah, right. <laughs> I just hang out in Chinatown with my peeps. Oh, man, we gotta edit that out. <laughs> you know, I thought we were doing pretty good when we were having lunch at Tempura House, uh, Chinese Japanese, Japanese cuisine in Wisconsin. We walked away without getting sick. What did, uh, what did that fortune cookie you had say? Your luck will change today. Oh man. That was like two minutes before <laughs> this happens. That ain't right. <laughs> so we 
we got this bad boy across the street. The sledge. I'm just gonna roll it up on that. Oh, okay. The struggle. Good. Uh, go forward just a hair. Go forward like an inch. You've kind of rolled off of it. Just like barely anything at all. Go forward. A little bit more. More. Little bit more. Little bit more. Alright, it's good. Man, you guys think we can fix it? It's gonna be a bitch because it's wedged in. Huh. We could just manhandle it. How are we gonna get it off of it? I guess we can kind of work on it. Get that edge up. I think I got the big one. Look. Lost this sucker too. like it just came off completely wherever it is. It might be clean enough. Just pop a new one off. Yeah, it's pretty good. How are we going to get this wheel off? I don't know. What we need is we can just like pry it up. Yeah. Something to pry like it. A crowbar. I'm going to run back across the street for you. <laughs> <laughs> my flip flops. My hat blows off my head. That's not working. Is it? Is it? Is it coming up a little? Maybe a little bit. This fender's f***ed up anyway. Uh, it came up a little bit, it looks like. Your luck will change today, it said. This tire's not even up high enough. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it's not going to have one. Uh, how about a rock? Improvisation. Oh, yeah. Hey, this rock's enough? It's pretty flat. Hey, just pull forward. Ugh. What happens if you're too lazy to bust the jack out? Nah, a little bit more. Stop! Ah. Rolled off of it. Back it up. Two inches. That. That's good. Alright, go ahead. Back it up. Slowly, slow, slow. Okay. Back it up a little bit more. All right, it's good. Stop. It's definitely up a little bit higher. Yep. Eh, 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 eh. 
Now, if you don't make it as a pro fisherman, you can always be a metal fabricator. Modern day blacksmith. Forge and fire. Sorry, ladies. He's taken. <laughs> almost as good as the Korean Dr. Strange. Beat it like I owes you money! We don't need no stinking jack. This is why we evolved past our primate relatives. We got a perfectly good jack. But hey, it's all good. More! A little bit more! A little bit more! That's good! That's true. Ah! Big ant. <laughs> Saw those things freaking in the rocks. Some luck will change in my ass. <laughs> I mean, a fender's really just for looks. And it still looks pretty good. It's got character. You know, it's gone through some stuff. It's got a little lightness in it. Even in Wisconsin, you can find ratchets. We are laddies hoes. You can see this restaurant, it's not very... <sighs> well... Let's try that again. Absolutely. Let's make that turn a little wider this time. <laughs> oh, it worked out pretty good the first time around. <laughs> Poor fender is just sitting there minding its own business. Ah! Or the guardrail that is. Woke up to a rude awakening. Call this block cam. Okay. <laughs> Let's try this again. Alright. Should I document it just in case? No. <laughs> Dude, that tire doesn't have a guardrail. No, it sure doesn't. But that one does. Fending party. Sir, I've noticed you swung a lot wider this go around. Yeah. Care to elaborate on why? Uh, Just cautionary. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Makes yeah. sense. Just, just want to be careful, you know? I took it pretty wide the first time, too. Come on, man. Do you usually take them pretty wide? Mm-hmm. Oh. We're talking about turns here, or are we talking about something else? Uh, I don't know. What are we talking about? I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah.
This place is sick. Yeah, dude, I caught I was up here in the spring and caught I was catching five and a half. And I thought they were like sevens. Because they're so thick. And Somebody get caught, this guy a scale. My buddy caught like a six and a half. Dude, this place is dope. I'm not opposed to it. I just want to see one of those things on the wall with my own eyes. You think so? Oh yeah, the 262 should get bit. Yeah. Oh, holy crap. It's cold as shit right there. Yeah, I hear these are the deal though. These bulldog things. These? Yeah. They're the ugly suckers. When we were here, we used. Uh... Here's a plopper for you. Jeez. Yeah, these have been around for years. Yeah, dude, forever. I've caught smallies on these. Forever. That side? Oh, I believe it. Like that one? That's a small you hit that Heck one. yeah. But, uh. Dude, we were always fishing here last time. We were using these tubes that were like this big. Yeah. Were you guys yeah, catching? I think they got them. Yeah, that's what we call our fish line. Dang. This is crazy. Oh, that's right. Oh, we need a net. For our nine pound smallmouth. Dude, look at this. It's like yeah, yeah. Yeah. I feel pretty good with the stuff I brought. Thinking about this stuff, because this stuff is crude. I mean big predator fish, you know. Yeah, yeah. I like the way these guys do nets. It's right up my alley. I like the way these guys What's the biggest freshwater fish you've ever seen, Moe? 54 inch muskie. What? In, with your own eyes? Oh, the biggest one I've ever seen in my boat. My dad caught a 52. Well, what did he catch that on? That crankbait I was selling. The SHA. Oh, sick. Right over the weeds, dude. Look at some of these. Oh, yeah, these are sick. What's this thing? <laughs> the legend mm. seems legit. They're getting ideas, Steven. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's right. You guys got a pretty awesome shop. Well, thank you. Can I get a fishing license as well? Sure. Um, you want to do that separate because... Uh, cash or check for license. The licenses are cash or check okay. only. We can do this on debit or credit card okay. or whatever yeah, let's you want do. Let's do that separately. Yep. Bring this separate. You got no license on here or no? Six. No, it's my first time fishing in Wisconsin. Oh, okay. okay. So you're going to be a good buyer? Yeah. These are all safe. Do you need my ID? Wow, I'm going to be so screwed. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, I'm driving. Yeah, we don't have anything like this in California, so pretty cool. No, I wasn't thinking that. We get a lot of orders from California. Yeah, probably bass guys like me. Uh, sometimes, but sometimes there's a lot of guys from California that go up to Canada muskie fishing. Oh, fishers, okay. So. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep. So we got 7169. Let's see. So debit or credit? It hasn't been lucky trade new customers today. The system's been uh-oh. You can do it on your phone. Oh, okay, just like online? There you go. Yeah. See, that's what I'm doing. I'm basically doing online. online. Should but work. We've got some issues going today. Hmm. Okay, there's your receipt. Thank you. Can I take one of these? Sure can. Yep. I got a catalog. Buddy can grab one too if you want. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm. Sweet shot. <laughs> Figures. <laughs> Just bash dreaming. Not big bass. This guy's on the any bass dream team. <laughs> I'm about to be on the no bass dream team. It'd be big musky dreams real soon. You know the rule, right? You don't go into the grocery store hungry. hungry. <laughs> Dude. We got steaks. We got sandwich meat. I think we, we got, got everything. We got everything. 20 pound bag of ice. Ah! Bro, paint your windshield. Bro, just bugs all over this one. <laughs> Alright man, we've been driving all day. You picked me up at the airport in Chicago mm -hmm. at 8 o'clock this morning. Where the hell are you taking us? We are in Minocqua, Wisconsin right now. We got another 40 minute drive north of Minocqua. There are lakes all over this. Sick. Big smallies. Big smally dreams. Muskies. Okay. Maybe a couple walleyes for the fryer. Oh, all right. Maybe, nah, probably won't mess with no large one. Nah, we're not. Nah. We, nah, no large ones. It's all about the big smallies. That's right. Big, big smallies. Big brown fish. Uh, Sevens, eights, nines. They've caught those up here. Recent. Yeah. Caught. Okay. Three over seven I know of were caught recently on the lake we're going to. A nine was caught last year. Sick. We're gonna catch them all. So we can probably beat your PB. Hopefully. And hopefully beat my PB. Yeah. Mine's seven one. Mine's like six and a half. That's that's still a it's giant. Still stout. That is a giant. Mm -hmm. So cool man. We got we got that. That's our goal. We got plenty of food. There's definitely no shortage of food. We got the bananas. Some for monkey, gold. Monkey bass fishing. Dude, they bumped Kendrick Lamar in Wisconsin. You guys are a long way from Compton. <laughs> <laughs> That's dope. Oh, yeah. Hold on, bro. Just grab the whole box up. Dude. That's Carl, the lucky pink hippo. <laughs> this dude comes everywhere with me. <laughs> All right, is that the mascot this week? <laughs> Either Carl or, or the penguin. Oh man. Sure one, you think. I mean, you do spend quite a bit of time on the road by yourself. Dude, when I'm by myself, when I'm up there. You're riding shoddy? Oh yeah. What's up? That's a jig. <laughs> what's up? Carl, what's the penguin's name? <laughs> None guy named yet. Just got him. What the hell? He's, he's from Tennessee. Oh, he's 
Tennessee penguins. Yeah, Tennessee aquarium. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. Where the hell did you find a pink hippo? My, my friend gave that to me the first year I fished opens. That's okay. a good, good luck charm. That's legit. Yeah. All right, can't hate. And he's been coming all the tournaments with me ever since. He doesn't always ride in the boat though, but mm. he's around, hanging out. I had to wash him. He had a little, little mold growing on him at one point. <laughs> I can honestly say I've never seen a pink hippo. Don't hate. I'm not Don't mad. Hate on Carl. I ain't mad at you, Carl. You do your thing, bro. You be you. Steven. What's up? You seem pretty well learned it. Well learned it. What did you study in school? Fisheries and wildlife conservation. No kidding. So the the bulk of my classes were fishing like animal behavior, uh, conservation. Uh, techniques and stuff like that so wow. I, get, I mean I get, I get into it some people you know yeah man so would you say the sciences have a heavy influence on your actual fishing yeah understanding behavior and fishery fish movement a big 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 part of fishing this is a little bit under under uh, what's the word it's not a big focus I feel like for a lot of people Oh, I think people completely missed the mark. It's totally overlooked. Like, understanding what fish do on what fishery is, is so important. It's more important than any secret lure or secret color or anything or like spot. that. Or spot. Or spot. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. A lot of spots I find are just based off of what I think the current population is, like, what they're doing at any given time. Okay, that's, so, that's dictated by environmental conditions. Environmental conditions, okay. behavior, habitat. Habitat's the biggest thing. Seasonal patterns. Mm -hmm. Everybody yeah. likes a little bit different. It's funny how, like, in that Oneida, for example, you'll there'll be fish middle of summer in a foot of water. Smallmouth, too. Yeah. Um, Eating frogs. Eating frogs. And then you'll go, you know, a similar lake, like by me, is Lake Geneva. You won't catch a smallmouth in less than 20 feet of water right. in the middle of summer. And it's a very similar lake. Natural, deep, clear water. Mm-hmm. And just, they're just completely a different fish Different behavior. population, different behavior. And I, I don't know exactly what it is. Maybe how they feed, maybe? Yeah. Probably depends on what exactly they're feeding on and... But that, What's that's available for the, prey? That's the thing about bass fishing, though. There's always a population deep, and there's always a population shallow. On almost every fishery you ever go to. Wow. Um, I want to call BS would, on would, you, but you have would a, you agree? You have a freaking no? degree in it, man. I would completely agree wholeheartedly. I mean, not everywhere has a deep population, but I'm convinced every lake there's always some population of bass living shallow. Well, I like fishing shallow. I think that's pretty evident. So when yeah. people tell me you can't catch fish shallow, I kind of just laugh at them because everywhere I go, I catch fish shallow. Yeah, I agree. You know, and shallow is relative, right? Yeah. So if you're fishing a, a lake that's got a max depth of 20 feet, you know, shallow is going to be like a foot or two of water. Yeah. Like the delta. Guys catch giants in the delta in a foot of water or less. Right. You know, but then you go to a deep, rocky, you know, clear reservoir and shallow is like 15 feet. Yeah. 20 feet. Well, like, the lakes by me, shallow, we consider... Uh, Lake Geneva we fish we consider shallow 6 to 8 foot okay but deep you catch them 25 30 right uh, Carl, Carl would you concur Carl what do you think man there. yeah he looks a little impatient <laughs> damn bro smile man <laughs> it ain't all bad you're a pink hippo yep. life is good life is good so you're like a step beyond a recreational biologist. Yeah. You're almost like a verified actual biologist. Bachelor, I have bachelor's of science. Man. In yeah. the field of science, who would have thought? Uh huh. That's impressive, man. There's a lot of a lot of late nights of uh, studying up for the exams. <laughs> you're like an Asian Ken Cook of the modern era. <laughs> I guess so. You know what that is? Mm -hmm. That's 
impressive. I didn't think you'd know who that was. Ken Cook. Old Bassmaster, dude. Yeah, man. Biologist. Old school. Shout out to all the dudes that paved the way. Old school, Ken Cook. Oh. They can always find a population of fish shallow almost everywhere I go. You know, and I find shallow fish are typically more active than deep fish. Typically. Because yeah, they're they're not up there like hanging out most of the time. No, they're up there hunting. They're, they're hunting. And if it's hot water, they got to eat. Yeah, their metabolism speeds up, right? That's one thing that people don't understand is like these are cold-blooded animals. Right. Their metabolism is dictated directly by the water temperature. Mm -hmm. Big time. That's why like one or two degree difference can like turn them on mm -hmm. or turn them off. Especially in Florida. I hate Florida. Yeah, I don't I think I would like Florida either. I haven't really fished there. But I'm going to in a couple weeks. For Goliath Grouper. Oh, that's not even fair. <laughs> that's a giant smallie. <laughs> that's a smallie on, I don't even know, beyond steroids. Kryptonite. Like 45 pounds of drag. Like, tie me to the boat, please. I don't want to get pulled into the bull shark water. You get pulled in. You yeah, honestly, pulled you in probably could. Like, tuna fishing out here, people, like, their foot gets caught in a rope or something. And the fish drags them down. Yeah, it's crab fishing. No, tuna fishing. Why the hell? Why are there ropes laying around? When they harpoon the sucker. <laughs> I don't know. I heard it on uh, Wicked Tuna they were talking oh, about. Oh, man. It. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> I hate that show. Dude. It's so fake. I mean, it's entertaining. That's the problem. You guys just want to be entertained. You guys are setting the bar hear. way too low. Dude, I'm all about learning. Every time I go on the water, I'm heard that before yeah, from the best so like what's the word for cliche it's, it's, it's a little it, cliche though. but it's true though I mean, hopefully we learn how to catch what were you just saying what i was just saying my theory on bass is there's a lot of there's a lot of like similarities between animals like people like deer hunt will tell you this mm -hmm. that they'll travel and feed and they kind of act the same even like people you know we all travel on roads that predictable behavior predictable patterns. behavioral patterns yes like those big big fish i'm sure people out value say tell you this but those big like giant old ones they do the same thing over and over they want to go eat at their favorite spot and then they go rest in their favorite spot and they just live in the same area and they always travel like on the same routes yep it's just like people like you go to work and then you go home or you go to the restaurant and you're Absolutely. always traveling like the same every every like deer too are like that too you know they do the same same stuff over and over and over and you just gotta like figure out a lot of behavioral so no, I hear you like, um you know when I'm targeting these bigger fish whether it's a large mouth of the swim bait or these big small mouth on traditional baits it's really figuring out where they're living and then kind of theorizing like, how they're traveling from and to right, those areas right. and intercepting them at I some mean that's point. so so like that's so obvious on like the TVA lakes these guys that fish from what's a TVA lake? The Tennessee Valley, like oh, Kentucky, okay. Kentucky Lake, Chicago, yeah, or like Wheeler, or whatever. But every year it's the same thing. In the spring, it's you know fish start to move shallow, and then every year Kentucky Lake floods in the spring, and everyone go flips bushes and catches them, and then it gets hot and they get done spawning, and all the fish move out to the ledges, so people catch them on the first primary points. Right, and then everyone goes out. That's why everyone's like, oh, it's ledge season. It's just because the fish go out to the ledges to feed up on shad and stuff. So that that's like, you know, early summer to mid-summer. And then by the time, you know, late summer, so many fish have been caught for one and they can all spread out. And another thing is, I think the fish just spread out because the, the schools get broken up. And then in the fall, it's so tough because there's fish in two feet of water, there's fish in 30 feet of water. There's all over the place. Yeah. And then next year the spring comes and they come back together again it's crazy it's like 
so predictable. You know, I don't want to really understand. You know, I don't really like fishing ledges and stuff because I'm not very good at it. But I understand the concept of it, and I've I've caught fish off ledges and you know how the fish all group up and stuff. Yeah, man, the fishing theory and philosophy really fascinates me. You know, and the whole mental aspect of this mind game that's ever changing and evolving is what I think what makes this special. Oh yeah, and it's like, you'll never be, I don't care who you are, you'll never be the best one, best fisherman ever. You might be the best on a given weekend, yep. or a given event, or you know, but there's this always is, gonna be someone that knows more than you, no matter where you go. And it's just when you think you haven't figured it out, uh, they'll humble there's how the many, crap there's out There's how many here. tournaments I've fished, you know, it's like, um, I, we were talking last year, Oneida. And he's texted me, I just I was, bombed day one. I was pumped, you know, I had to figure it out. I'm like, I yep. got this fish named, I'm like, John's over there, Timmy's over there, you know, like, this four pound large rod is over here living under this rock, you know. It's yep, like, I remember that, man. I was like, on him, and then day one of the tournament, I catch a four pound large rod, it's like third cast of the day, I'm like, oh, I got this. I run it like two hours, and I'm like, what happened? Oh, <laughs> man. And it's just conditions change conditions conditions and uh, the fish the change. more i think about it is those fish i was catching in practice they were all post spawn but they were like still up shallow moving around and i think these largemouth when they're post spawn everyone thinks like they immediately start feeding i think they get in this weird like for a couple weeks they're just kind of they just kind of sit around and don't do anything yeah they're probably just tired and recuperating yeah. And they're, that's the hardest fish to catch is when they're just like sitting there and they want to move. And then I'm with you, man. And then all of a sudden it's like they start firing up again. Have you ever seen have you ever seen O Search? No. They put they put tags on great white sharks. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And you there's an app, you could follow the sharks. No. Each every day. Like you can look up like Catherine is you know, off the off the coast of like Maine or whatever. That's sick. And then you could see him, and then you could hit like a trail for like the past two years, wow. and you see him. It's it's kind of crazy, but when I first saw this, they act kind of like bass. You know, big predators. Yeah. They got their they they're down south, and then they just like move up the coast, and then they go out deep, and they're like out there for a little bit, and then they come back down. And down by the coast so they just do this big loop but it's if you break it down it's kind of like what a bass does goes up to the bank is doing whatever up shallow moves out yep. to the shelf moves out feet deep or whatever and then comes back up shallow it's, it's crazy you, you gotta check it out it's I'm down for that it's cool I, I first started looking at it like last year there's like one great white that they had tagged for like five years, I think, or something. And you can see its trail. That's so sick. They and cover so much water. 30,000 miles in one year. Wow. You just think about it. That's a fish. Yeah, man. It's a big fish, but... I've always wondered how much largemouth and smallmouth move around on a big body of water. Dude, I read in college. I don't, I don't remember this exactly, but I was reading an article about smallmouth moving on Great Lakes, and... I swear I remember this. I don't, I mean, I think it, this is what it said, but they tagged a smallmouth and it, and over a course of two days, it swam five miles, like up the, up the side of the Great mm. Lakes. That's insane. That's a lot of water to cover. But you see them, they, oh yeah, they're, they're quick. Moving. You know, they, I've seen schooling wolf packs on like the up shallow. Yeah. You ever seen that? Oh yeah. And they're just cruising. Oh, they're moving. So fast. For sure. And you throw a bait over there and then you catch like one or two and then the rest of them just keep going. Just keep on going. Oh, see you, man. <laughs> or they get all fired up and start following it in. Yeah, that's what I like. We're we going to do that. We're going to yeah. do a little bit of that. 13 miles. Almost there to the promised land. Picked you up at 8 o'clock this morning. It's 745 right now. 746. Yep, it's been a, a pretty long mission, but getting used to it. Got some uh, character on the trailer. 
Yeah. She's holding up though. She's doing good, man. Mirror, what was it? Mirror man? Or... Whatever Thor's, Thor's hammer. hammer. <laughs> it's called. Came through in the clutch. Right. And Carl's good luck, of course. Definitely take pictures with him on the boat. Oh, we gotta get gas for the boat. We gotta Hard. do that. Yes, Alright, after all that spiel. Yeah. Why is it that anybody should even care what you think or have to say? What is what is it that you do, man? You're traveling Bassmaster I Opens tournament? The Bassmaster Opens for this will be my fifth year. Almost made the Elite Series one year, missed it by two points. No! Oh! Which, I mean, let's put that dude, in perspective. Like, what is? Two I'll tell points? you. I'll tell you what two points season? is. Two points is the James River, which was the second tournament. No, or was it the first one? It was the first one that year, 2013, I think it was, or 2014. James River, day two. I have four fish in my live well. I throw a finesse jig up next to a log, 14 incher. Set the hook, it's coming in, skiing on the top. I'm like, oh, I got this sucker, you know, like whatever. How many times have you caught a 14 inch and just reel it in and nothing? This <laughs> fish, this stupid little, oh man, this little fish. Oh he's man, this like fish hurts. I can eight tell. Feet, eight feet from the boat. Okay. I'm like, oh, you're about he's to swing coming, him in. I'm about to swing him in. He does one of those stupid cartwheel things that just does like, and it just like flips <laughs> over and it just. It freaking comes off. Oh. So you weighed four that day? I weighed four. And I and I missed a check by four ounces or something. I think But I more it. importantly. And then at the end of the season, I missed the Elite Series by two points. And uh yeah. That's brutal. It was. I think I missed our turn Unfortunately. Oops. That fortune cookie's coming into play again. Carl, you're supposed to be looking out for us, man. That's because I'm talking too much. Got you all fired up about that 14 incher. Dude, that was the dumbest fish I ever lost. Uh, so, if you had landed that fish, you would be fishing the elites. If I landed that fish, I would be a 2015 Elite Series Pro. Mm. Or, or be, yeah, 2015, I would have been on there. Well, you know what, man? I think you're going to make it. This wasn't meant to be. Yeah. I mean, I. I've learned so much since then, and I was gonna say I've done so much better since then. Like, no, that was two years ago. So that was 2015. I would have made it, but uh, honestly, if I made it that year, I don't think I, I don't think I would have made it. Yeah, you would have felt because, falling out, huh? Dude, I've even in every year. This sounds so, you know, everyone says every year I'm just learning so much, but even like last year. You want to talk about you want to talk about adversity or whatever last year first tournament oneida i bombed right i was telling you mm -hmm. 100 and something place and then you know that kind of like threw me off i was like well that sucks james river 130 something place that was it and i'm like well shoot i just wasted like five grand yeah <laughs> you're just like well that sucks almost dropped out of champlain like screw it i don't even want to fish you know season's over yeah, that's that's tough. champlain's 18 hours from my house do i want to drive 18 hours spend another three grand you know yep and just talking to some of my friends with us like dude what do you got to lose just go well first of all champlain's an awesome lake so it's like, might as well just go. I got the time off work, go, you know, catch a bunch of fish on like one of the best lakes in the country. And have fun. And have a blast. And what did I do? I went up there, first spot, I like, in practice. My buddy, I was talking to my buddy, Richard, and he's like, you should just check out this little area. It looks pretty cool. I'm like, all right, whatever, you know. I go. He's like, I caught a couple there, you know, maybe you could, uh, catch a good one here like afternoon or something you know i pull up there first spot first day of practice throw my little drop shot out there it hits the bottom i'm like looking around because i've never been to the lake i'm like this lake is huge <laughs> i look up my lines like 
swimming off. Swimming off. I'm like, oh, I got one. Freaking three and a half pounder. Smalley. Nice. I was like, huh, okay. That's cool. I'm like, maybe he's got some friends. Throw it out there again, catch another one. I was like, oh. Beep. Waypoint. That's the last I fished that spot until day one of the tournament. I come back day one of the tournament. Six casts. Hold that thought. I pull up. That first day of tournament, six casts, five smallies in the boat. Six casts. Six casts. Five bass. Five bass. And the only reason why I didn't have five on five casts, I set the hook too early. <laughs> on one fish and it stole my bait. It was, long story short, it was the best tournament, one of the best tournaments I ever fished in my life. I ended up second. Almost won the open. Oh, man. That's dope. Less than a pound. I think it was like a pound and a quarter or something over three days so mm -hmm. you know that's that's one good fish really yeah. day two so these are my weights 19 and a half like 18 10 or something and then 20 almost 21 wow so like i caught the biggest bag of the week on the last day that's impressive and had just amazing amazing time you know it was, it was the most fun i ever had yeah man and i almost didn't want to go i almost wanted to quit so that's just that's just a lesson for you. That's yeah. it, man. Yeah, man. It's just, you're it's, never going to win them all. But And then this year, I've been just beating up on the local <laughs> local one-dayers. One of Wednesday night or the savage. Before we came here. Had to get some grocery money. I hear you, man. We spent like 300 bucks at the grocery store. Yeah, but I never found a gas station. Yeehaw, man. Oh, here's always the fun part. Watching your money disappear. <laughs> wah, wah. There's more in there than I thought. Oh, gas? Yeah. Probably won't need that much. Might as well just so we have it. No, it's, it's better to have it, especially if we're going to be a waste, you know, yeah. from. We're going to. Put the boat in the water too, you know, leave it in the water. Yep. One last thing to think about. Or as my buddy Forrest Gump would say, one last thing. You don't have your straps on? I don't. No. Just towing for 12 hours, no big deal. <laughs> I ain't gonna go anywhere. Oh, man. I don't know why it's locked. Is this one locked? Yeah. Yeah. On the motor? Yeah, I had that thing on. That's cool. Come on, No big deal. Clearly, I'm not worried about it. <laughs> not worried about guardrails either. <laughs> I got insurance. That's uh, uh, why you got insurance for those uh, moments when you're just an idiot. And it just keeps on going. You're only at 12 pounds. <laughs> The spidey. Oh, yeah. Which ones are we going to use here? Okay, that's cool. Dude, I've never actually seen leeches before, dude. Those will work good for walleyes. He's got like a little peninsula that's right next to deep water that we'll probably fish. Okay. 
So. Cool. I just want to try it just because I've never done it. You want to grab one? All right. Yeah, yeah I grabbed it right here. Grab a... 24? That's fine. Yeah. Cool. That's a, that's a lot. Is it? 24? Yeah. Just in case we do it every yeah. night. I grab these. I always like these like pencil bobbers yeah. better. Oh, we get, yeah. Yeah. That's too big. No, cause yeah, that's probably gonna be good for this size bobber. Or you get the smaller one. We just put two on if we need them. Yeah. My bobber get, game is pretty strong, bro. Should we get like uh, actual like bait hooks? It would probably hold the crawlers better and leeches. Got leeches. That's crazy, man. It's like the in fisherman come to life. Six. Uh, I'd probably go. Hey, if you use this on Saturdays, take whatever's in here and then you're done. Okay. This is light wire. Yeah, those will bend out. That's a crappy crap. Um, yeah. Dude, they buy this crap like on jig heads and stupid crap, right? Yeah. Like, look, they got jig heads right there. No. no. Or these ugly things. Okay. That's what I use for crap. These little things. Yep. If this crap is there, they'll eat that three inch spark shed. I got little crappy things. <laughs> but I don't have the jig heads. They don't suck on you or anything. That's yeah, they do. Do they? they? Yeah. They, they try? They're not blood suckers. Yeah, they're not the oh, blood suckers, but okay. they still will, like, latch onto you. No they, kidding, they huh? Just use your nail. Have them suck onto your nail. And then put the hook through them. Oh, okay. That's a good tip. Yeah. Nice. Insider knowledge. I've literally never used them for bait because I've never seen them before. They work pretty good. Yeah. I'm from California, so like we've only like read about them like on like magazines and stuff, you know. <laughs> Can you sign so, that one? For I feel me? like a little kid. Do you want a bag? Uh, I think we're okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Have fun. Have a good night, ladies. Good luck. Thank you. Hey, Steve. Are those like Wisconsin tens? <laughs> I give them nine. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we got f***ing leeches. Yeah, look, I got these little things. Oh yeah, that's perfect. That's yeah, that's money. That's what I use. I just forgot the jig heads and the ultra lights. <laughs> I should have brought them. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah, because I mean he's been guiding and stuff too, right? Yeah, I think he has it. Dude, that's freaking Dude, sick. Those are sick for drop shining for smallies. What? Yeah. Smallies eat them too, oh. huh? Dude, they eat that thing. Dude, that's so sick. They they crush that thing. I've literally Small. never seen these before. Watch out, Carl. They coming for you. I honestly didn't know if I'd ever come see this as a kid. When you read about it, you see it on TV, you know? But it just seems so far out of reach. <laughs> ah! Saw my first fish. Oh, look at all the crawdads. Dude, there's so many crawdads. Oh, we should have got a trap. He's got some. We could put him out on the end of his back. Dude, there's seriously so many crawdads. Hey man, thanks for bringing me out here, bro. That's what's up. We made it. Dude, there are so many crawdads. Dude, there's that little so we can sit on. Oh, okay. Dude, we can eat crawdads too. You down? Cool. Yeah, let's go get a trap room. Are we getting bit? Probably. Right on top. No.
know, fall blast off, time to get some cast off. Doing this here for years, get my pass on. Stream mask on, putting in work. Snap back, got me focused, never set a woman a shirt. I missed one and hit one, man, that's getting some. Two, three, four, five more, come on, that's ripping up. The way the bass miss sticking, the way my feet.